Hi, and welcome to The Way It Is. I'm Paul. And I'm Marla. And today we're continuing our series in Revelation, and today we're going to talk about the prostitute and the beast. And uh, so this is a, an interesting passage. It gives a um, kind of a allegory of the, you know, at the end time, the rulers of the earth. And, uh, you know, some people think it has to do with the, the church, partially. Um, the beast, obviously, being also called the Antichrist. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. It's not boring, this book. This book isn't boring. This book <laughs> it's is always not boring. So, even the titles are, like, suspenseful. And yeah. Like, oh, okay, let's pray. Lord, we do want to read the Revelation with your heart and your eyes and your understanding. It's it's very complex, but I pray you'll give us wisdom and insight and just help Paul and I communicate this clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls. Now, we talked about the seven bowls last time in the previous episode, if you want to watch that, seven bowls. And we talked about the, all the, the seven bowls are like, uh, you know, Exodus-style plagues poured out, like on Egypt, but poured out on the end times. So the angel that had the seven bowls, one of the angels that had the seven bowls, came to me and said, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery. And the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. So, um, first they're showing the punishment of the prostitute. Okay, with her, with this prostitute, the kings of the earth committed adultery. So, it's saying that basically, it's, it's like, a lot of people think that the prostitute is the world system. You know, that kings claim to be Christian, nations claim to be Christian, uh, many of them, a lot of them don't, um, but their rulers are actually into all kinds of foul things and selling out their people and, you know, for various, you know, reasons or whatever. And so that's kind of the idea is that these kings are not actually being faithful to their people, they're not being faithful to God, but they're being, uh, you know, led astray by this world system. You know? Yeah. And some people think that this involves the church and that the church is, you know, unifying these nations and it's being led astray by the world system. So that's that's the other interpretation. Yeah, there's so many different directions you can go when you, especially I think when you try to interpret a passage like this. Um, you know, I, I think when I, I read it different from different angles throughout my whole, you know, from throughout my life. And you've heard so many different um, interpretations that sometimes at some point you're like, okay, um, what, what does it mean? But I, I do think um, the Holy Spirit has shown me in so many different ways recently how the church has prostituted themselves just mm. by embracing um, the worldly thinking and worldly ways. And I think that, you know, it's kind of like the, the world's going to do what the world's going to do. Right. But I think when the church starts... Um, getting, Emulating the world. That's a problem. It's a huge... Right. It's like it's almost like, you know, even when you look at the character of Christ where it says, judge not, lest thee be judged, you know, it's like you can't expect the world to to live holy or live righteous if they don't even know Christ because it's the Holy Spirit in us that helps us live right. righteously. Without Him, we can't, right? It's the Spirit of God that, you know, leads us to truth and leads us to, to be like Christ. So... Right. Um, but, but if the uh, leaders in the church are being like the world, right. then that means they're not obeying the Spirit of Christ, right? They're not obeying the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Right. So that's that what a lot of people see here. Um, then the angel... Oh, oh, I would... The adulteries part. That's You told me that years ago, and that was like... I thought it was very profound. I thought you were going to go there, so we hadn't oh, gone there yet. Okay. The, the adulteries. Yeah. The, it is, the it is an interesting thing in, in Greek. So there's a couple things interesting about this in Greek. Um, so one of them is that... The meaning in Greek, and this came from a guy who speaks Greek, um, like literally he's Greek, uh, and he also is a, a student of the ancient Greek. But he says that, you know, the, the, the construct here is people who are wealthy enough to be lazy and get into trouble, okay? That's the kind of idea here, um, mm-hmm. it, this kind of thinking of these people, um, that they are, you know, they, and it's different. We, we translated it differently. It's luxuries mm-hmm. um, was part of it. You know, it's, it's people that are wealthy enough to have luxuries. And because of having time and luxuries and wealth, they can get into all kinds of, uh, you know, evil living. Now, I think today we don't really, a lot of people think they're poor, right? But they're not because compared to the history of the world, uh, most Americans, for instance, today, compared to the history of the world, live like kings would live 500 years ago, okay? They don't understand, you know, even, do you have enough food to eat? Mm-hmm. Do you, you know, you have entertainment? You have, 
you know, all these different things, you live like a king. Like, right. I don't think people really, you have warmth, you have heat in the winter, you have cool in the summer. Well, I think, but kings wish they had that in their drafty castles. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, we think that we are so put upon, but the reality is we eat better food that's more nutritious. We have better entertainment. We have better everything than anybody in the history of Earth has ever had. We have more money, more disposable income. We go, we travel more. We go to more places. Even if you just have a car, right. you travel more. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I, I was kind of going a different direction with yeah, this Yeah, I know what you're going to. But go <laughs> ahead, you can do that part. Yeah. Well, I think there was another passage, and I'm not exactly sure where it is in Revelation, where it talks about um, the... The adulteries were intoxicating. Exporting adulteries. Yeah, exporting like Babylon adulteries. Babylon exports and, adulteries, yeah. And so you kind of I think it's see, right down here because we oh, yeah, there it is. We're getting Babylon, there and eventually. Yeah. So basically this whole concept of adulteries is um, something that this group or this is uh, marketing or, you know, reveling selling. or selling. And yeah. It, it's fascinating to me because we're like, how do you someone sell adulteries or, or yeah. even the wine of her adulteries. It's like adultery as a singular, you're like, hmm, but adulteries is a yeah. whole different idea. And I, I think you can kind of take it and you basically said something really profound. You thought uh, it was to me, it was really eye-opening was when you said um, America is one of the biggest exporters of porn right. and also already so, an X-rated and just filth, right? This is why people think that America might be Babylon is because when you say who exports adulteries, um, it, pornography, it's America, right? That's the, the country that does it the most. And so this is why a lot of people see America in that role because they are exporting adulteries. And what does Jesus say about adultery? It's like if you, you know, sin with a woman in your heart, you've committed adultery, right. you know? So it's like, it's not that people are literally um, sleeping around with their wives, but in their hearts, they still are, right? So Right. And it's, it's, it's just a different angle to look at it. And you're like, oh, okay, it's, it's very insightful. Yeah. So we, yeah, so we have um, those two things in that passage right there, okay? So that the, those are two very interesting things about the Greek that are really not that easy to catch in English. Uh, verse 3, Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and seven horns. Ten. Oh, and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. Okay, she held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. Okay, so here, um, again, the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And so in this wilderness, he sees a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. So here's the thing, now, the scarlet beast is people think is, you know, the devil or some kind of demonic force or the beast, right? Um, the Antichrist. Um, so here's the thing that's interesting is that the woman in previous chapters, at, you know, was the church, right? And so some people say this is still the church. Hmm. Now, I don't know if I buy that, but it is an interesting thing to talk about at least, you know, and I don't want to do tons of identification. I want to really leave this vague because I want, I'm far more interested that when you read Revelation and when we read the Revelation, that we get the spirit of what God's trying to tell us and that we will be able to identify those things when they come, okay? So it's not important that we get it exact or even try it. That's bad for us to try to get it exact. The idea is to have all these things in the back of our mind so that when we see something like that, we can say, hmm, that's interesting. You know, one yeah, thing we saw this true. week, now this may or may not be true, um, but it's one of those things that's in the back of your mind and you kind of wait and see. And it's that, you know, somebody who had been given the vaccine. A, a trial, vaccine trial. Trial for, you know, the coronavirus was actually got boils. Um, now, I don't know, is this true? I don't know this person. I, mean, I don't know if this is, I tried bit. to investigate a little bit. I don't know if, how true this is. Is this verified? Um, but it's interesting in the back of your mind, you know, and the person there was saying, hey, you know, in the back of my mind, I know that people who get the mark got boils. So just kind you of know. keep it in the back so of my mind. So is it or isn't it? I don't know. That's a good question. But let's put that in the back of our mind and just kind of, you know, pay attention, right? Yeah. Let's pay attention and keep watching and see what's happening. Yeah. Now, I'm not telling you to get or not get, I, you know, yeah. do what you feel your conscience. You know, if they're not putting it on your hand or your forehead, they might use it to buy and sell. It might be a trial run of something they use right. to buy and sell, and they might have something else later. Like, I don't really know the answer to all those questions, okay? This is something you need to use wisdom. You need to pray. You need to seek the Holy Spirit. 
and really feel out what you think God is doing, okay? Because you don't want to take the mark, okay? It's very important that you don't take the mark. Yeah, we. I think it's just, I, I feel in my heart a sense of urgency that we just need to start praying. And, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to have to guide us each step of the way. And when we read passages like this, we should go, okay, um, you know, and what what is it that in our hearts that is considered prostitution to the Lord? You know, at right. what point are we putting... Right, so not you know, only is it real adultery as far as, like, pornography or whatever, but it's also, you know, the... The you know people watch shows that demean God, right? Mm. They, they so this entertainment we talked about that we have today that you know is so much better, more not better, but so much more than people had in the past. But a lot of it is very anti God, right. and we kind of brush it off, and we kind of make excuses for why we want to watch this stuff that is really foul and and you know horrible to our God, and Absolutely. we really shouldn't because you know when we do that, we're putting money in the pockets of people who are, hate our God and want to destroy his yeah. church, you know. And so we really don't want to fund our enemies. Like, that's we, not very smart, right? And I think the Holy Spirit will give us sensitivity to, to, right. to what's of him or isn't. Right. And, and I'll, I'll be honest, with that comes a double-edged sword because as we grow sensitive, we have... There are times where I'm looking around, how, how come I'm the only one grieved by this? How right. come no one else seems to care? You know, I was in a situation, I was at a church where someone was just basically kind of making fun of what I felt. You know, this person probably later on would say that wasn't the intention. But it felt like they were mocking the gifts of the Spirit, and I just started crying. I, I couldn't even, like, stop it. I'm like, I don't know why I'm so grieved over this, but it was just felt like it was just mocking. And this is in a church that actually was believed open to in the gifts. gifts of the Spirit, so it was like, right? it was like so. there was a story being shared. Anyway, long story, but I left that room going, Lord, I am feeling very sensitive to this. But I, I think being sensitive to the Holy Spirit is not a bad thing. It's right. like, but what do you... It's the, what we should strive to be, The problem really. then is you get to a point where you can get... I can... I'll be honest, Paul, sometimes I'll hear some shows that are being on and they're relatively clean, but they'll use God's name in vain. Yeah. And I, I don't even like that. You know, I don't even want to... I, 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 I sometimes just want to leave the room or I'm like, why are we watching this? You know, so it's kind of like I'm very, very sensitive to that. And, um, you know, I have to walk that line, especially in a setting where someone else is saying it. Do I just, I don't want to, you know, if it's my own kids, I'll call them out. But, you know, yeah. it, it can't, like, it's hard because it's, it grieves me. But I think if we're to a point where we're grieved by the things that grieve God and we respect the Lord and we want to put him in his rightful place and we don't want to prostitute him, where our hearts right. are so tender, right. we're going to be more sensitive. We're going to be more aware, right? Right, exactly. Um, yeah, so, I mean... Uh, okay, so we have blasphemous names uh, and seven heads and ten horns. Now, we, do, we see this in Daniel as well. The seven heads and the ten horns is mentioned in Daniel. I think it's chapter, I don't know, 10 or 11, 12 in there. This mentioned a couple times. Um, so this is like the end of this nation that is like the fourth beast in Daniel, which was the Roman Empire. So there seems to be something that comes out of the Roman Empire that will have seven heads and ten horns. Now, that means there are seven heads being like probably, I mean, either like seven nations, um, but ten people that are powerful out of those seven nations, right? That's what horns represent power yeah. in the Bible. Um, the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. Now, let me explain this, because this won't make sense, really, to us in a modern-day context, okay? But in those days, all through the Bible times, uh, prostitutes generally were paid with gifts, not with money, okay? Like, money wasn't really always a thing. I mean, I know it was by the time of John writing, uh, you know, the Revelation, the book of Revelation, but, you know, prostitutes traditionally were given gifts, not cash, okay? Uh, they weren't given silver. It was considered almost like it would be, um, you know, sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? Just sort of uh, gouch or whatever mm. they say. You know, the, like just, you, it's a thing you don't do to give a prostitute money. It's like, then it makes her even more Degrading, degraded, almost. right? So you give her a gift and it makes it look like you care because you thought about her or whatever, you know, like, so it was like there was at least a little bit of chivalry in the whole thing. Um, it, at least in, that's how they kind of dressed it up so they could feel better about it or whatever. So the woman, now when you look at the kinds of gifts that the woman has, this is what's so interesting. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet. Well, who's dressed in purple and scarlet? Royalty. Royalty. Nobody else. Like purple and scarlet. 
in ancient times, both of those dyes were very expensive, okay? For purple, they literally had to like dive down and get a certain, I think it's a conch shell or something that they would have to dive down to the middle of the Mediterranean Sea and divers would have to go down and open these shells and they would grind up this little piece of this shell and that's how they got purple dye, okay? So it wasn't that easy to get purple dye. And so to get purple dye, it was very, very hard and very expensive. And so purple dye was super pricey and only royalty had it. And that's why royal people wear purple originally. Now, obviously, we have lots of cheap ways to make purple today. Um, but that's why even you see like the Los Angeles Kings used to wear purple in part of their, because it's the color of royalty. You know, scarlet was the color of royalty. You know, glittering with gold, precious stones and jewels. Okay, so this, and pearls. So this woman has, and again, pearls, those days, they didn't farm pearls. You had to go find an oyster in like, somewhere and you had to you know find an old oyster because you know you wouldn't get a very big pearl out of a younger oyster so you got to mm-hmm. go dig down find an oyster that survived for a long time and open it up and find a pearl inside it was not that easy you know and so you know again these precious stones these pearls gold all these things these are gifts you get from royalty so this is saying that this woman this prostitute is the prostitute of royalty that this whole mm-hmm. sentence is telling you who she is she's a prostitute of royalty she's not like you know, she doesn't have any other suitors except for royalty. Everything she has is some royal gift, okay? She held a golden cup in her hand. Who drinks out of a golden cup in those days? Nobody. Only royalty. You know who drank out of a golden cup? Royalty. You know, we were reading the story of Daniel, I mean, of uh, Joseph recently. And what did he have? He had a golden cup. And what was the golden cup for? Because he's he was equal to Pharaoh. That's why he had a golden cup. Um, so this, this is all telling a story. It's painting a, a picture that to them is very meaningful. It, it's almost like dropping a hint as to who she is rather than saying it outright. And yeah. it makes it seem more real that way, you know? For us, unfortunately, now we're separated by thousands of years, like 2,000 years. It doesn't really mean that to us anymore, right? right. So it's a little bit harder to get. Um, it's filled with, the abom- with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. Okay, I'm not going to go into detail on that, but just say it's bad. The name written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth. Now, here's the thing about Babylon. What was Babylon originally? Well, Babylon originally was the Tower of Babel. And what did they want to do with the Tower of Babel? They wanted to get together and build a tower and say, we don't need God. Okay. And so this is the idea. This is why this this uh, character is called Babylon. It's the we don't need God people. Or okay. It's kind of like, to me, I feel like it's even more than that. It's uh, we are going to strive, do everything in our power to be self-sufficient, right? right? So, I mean, we don't we're need God. We're doing everything God, in our power like to, to exclude God, to right. not have a God, to hate God, okay? Yeah. And so then that leads into the next verse. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. Okay, This spirit of the Antichrist that's coming into our world right now, and it's coming, um, it hates Christians. And you, I'm sure you've seen it on message boards, in TV shows, in everywhere. There is a hatred of Christians. You know, how many villains can you count on TV shows where they're quoting Bible verses or they're singing Christian songs or they're... You know, it, there's just, it's just ridiculous the lengths that they will go to to make Christians the enemy in these shows, you know. Uh, they just go to ridiculous lengths. And why? Why should the Christian be the villain in all these shows? I mean, in reality, you know, in society, people who are Christians committing crimes is, is astonishingly low compared to the general population who are not Christians. I mean, non-Christians are 10 times more likely to commit a crime than Christians. Yeah. Um, but not in TV. In TV, it's the other way around. Yeah. Well, and I, I know, as I read this again, I, I'm even more grieved if I read it with the context that if it is re- uh, referring to people, the church who has basically been prostituting themselves against the Lord, they're taking you know God's holy people that have been brought to them that are trying to find the Lord, they're trying to seek the Lord, and they're getting drunk off of or using God's people for their own. Um, their own wealth, their own lifting up, their own becoming great. And mm-hmm. and that is a whole nother, almost, I would, I'd say worse level. You it's know, almost I, worse. I, you, if it's that, like, it's worse, right? So it's like you kind of have to go, because I mean, we could say But when it go, says the blood of God's holy people and the blood of those who bore testimony of Jesus, Jesus, I think that, you know, Christians will be killed 
Well, absolutely. But you know, it's not it's not the first time the church has killed Christians. I mean, yeah. if you look at that's why America was started. I mean, England was killing Christians. Right. That's why they left and went to the Netherlands, right? And then they left the Netherlands or Holland it, well, and then came to America because the they they didn't have a land in England. They couldn't go back because exactly. they were being killed for their faith. So that's and yeah, you that's see a history it. of that. I mean, we were even talking about that this week. I was lamenting things again, and you're like Jesus had to deal with persecution from his, the church of his day. I'm like, it happens. Right. But you could see it. So just keep that, I would say, that in the back of your mind as well. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. Now, when it says astonished here, the word's not really astonished. It was. It's more like perplexed or um, he just he he is dumbfounded, okay? And that's why the angel says, I'm going to explain this mystery to you. Because it is a mystery to him. He's like, I don't get it. I don't get what's going on here. Um, so why are you perplexed? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast, which you saw, once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. Okay. Let me explain this okay this is going to be and you may not believe this you may not agree with this i but i'm gonna tell you what i believe this is it says the beast okay which you saw once was now what what did we used to have we according to genesis 6 we had nephilim which were the sons of god fallen angels they came down they married women they ended up having the 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 gods and the giants as their children that we talk about in greek mythology or whatever the Titans, they were the Titans. The Titans ended up being killed and going to this place called Tartarus. Now, in Second Peter, Peter says, might be First Peter, I forget. When Peter, one of Peter's books, he says that, I think it's Second Peter, that they, um, these angels have been chained in Tartarus. Okay? Fallen angels, angels who sinned are chained in Tartarus. Now, Tartarus in Greek mythology is actually a bottomless pit. And what is it, or an abyss. And what does it say here? The beast who once was, in other words, there used to be Nephilim on the earth, that now is not, okay? By the time of John, are there any Nephilim left? He, he thinks no, or the angels are telling him no. There might still be giants at that time, and there were giants all the way up to explorers coming to the New World. There were still giants, right? Um, you know, especially in Patagonia, which is Patagonia means in Spanish, the land of the giants. Um, or at least in whatever language, may not be Spanish, but it's whatever language the people there had, Patagonia meant the land of the giants. Um, so once was, now is not, and yet will come up. And where did they come up from? The abyss. He's coming out of the abyss. This is the beast. The beast appears to me to be a Nephilim, a fallen angel. One Nephilim fallen angel we let out of that, uh, the time of eternal, or not eternal, but mostly eternal punishment in the bottomless pit. He'll be let out to be the Antichrist, mm -hmm. and he will have powers because he's an angel, okay? Yeah. He will do miracles. He will, miracles. He will do all these different things. You know, this this is who this person is, and he will be anti-God because he is a fallen angel, okay? So I want you to really see and go to its destruction. Where's the destruction? Well, at the end of time, everybody in, in the abyss, all these fallen angels in the abyss are going to be thrown in the lake of fire. They're going to their destruction. So... This is the thing, you know, this, it's telling us pretty clearly who this beast is, okay? The Antichrist is not a man. He is seems to be an Ephilim that's going to mm. appear out of nowhere. And, you know, a lot of people will give their you know allegiance to him because he will be big and powerful, maybe beautiful, maybe large, you know, like a big man. You know, all these things, whatever. He may, he may claim to be an alien. You know, who knows? Probably. Who knows? I mean, who knows what he's going to do? But this is what this, this beast is going to be. It says, um, The inhabitants of the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast, because it was once was, now is not, and yet will come. So what are they going to be astonished? Maybe he's a giant. Oh, there used to be giants, but now there's not giants mm -hmm. anymore. But this guy's a giant. He's huge. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe I'm something else. I'm comforted reading that part that says the inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book 
of life and the creation of the world will be astonished. Because that, to me, implies that those who, whose names are written won't be as surprised. It's like the Holy right. Spirit's going to, again, give us insight, give us give wisdom, us give us understanding. You know, yeah, so. they're gonna, he's going to give us insight and wisdom. And, you know, so these people will be astonished. Um, and I think you're going to see, and I think you already see, honestly, to me, you already see uh, a lot of uh, people, a lot of people who claim to be Christians that, in my opinion, they they really do have an astonishing lack of um, what's discernment. Discernment, oh, astonishing lack of discernment for the things of God, you know. And I think we, I think you're going to see even more the allegiance of people and the, you know, they're just there's going to be people who claim to be Christians that will al- ally themselves with this antichrist. You know, and this, the, the, even though he's a fallen angel and he's totally anti-God, he has blasphemous names. He blasphemes God all the time, and they're still going to make up reasons why this guy is good and we should follow him. You know, and and that's what we're going to see. Mm. Yeah. Sad. It, it's. I mean, I, I guess we're going to finish the next. Other yeah, one. I think we're going to do the next one. Yeah, it, it is. It is interesting. As I, I feel like that. You know, I had a vision a while, a while ago where I saw like the chasm, like there was almost a chasm that was growing, you know, spreading between the sides. You know, the divide was going to get greater and greater. And I think those who are in Christ are going to walk in greater peace, and those who are not are going to have less peace. And you're just going to see light and dark. I mean, there's, you yeah. know, if we look at the Word of God, there's so much, there's so much um, imagery, I suppose, between salt and light, darkness, light. You know, it's all yeah. whatever. You know, oh, you don't say, but it, you sit here and go, oh, okay. But we still have to seek the Lord in his heart. And so we need to be the people whose names are written in the book of life. That's Absolutely. what's really important. So if you haven't uh, given your life to Jesus Christ, um, I recommend that you just confess your sins to him. The Bible says those who confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Absolutely. you know, pray, call out to Jesus, confess your sins, accept him as Lord of your life, as master of your life, and say, God, what do you want me to do? You know, and he will start speaking to your heart. Follow those things little by little, and God will show you a whole new world, and you will have a life in Christ that is really amazing. God does a lot of amazing things, and it's been quite the adventure that Marla and I it's have. Not had. Boring. Let's say, it's yeah. not boring. It's not it's boring. It's not boring. It's good, but but we we can't live without. It. We can't. You know, you cannot see without him. You don't have eyes to see, right? Yeah, so the Holy Spirit him. really. Uh, you know, will make you, um, uh, give you discernment. Right, you know, it's a gift. When you we read the have. scriptures, they'll start to make sense because the Holy Spirit will be with you. So I encourage exactly. you to accept the, the Lord if you have not. Thanks for watching. If you need prayer, you can call our 24-hour prayer line, 877-588-1664, and somebody will pray with you to receive Christ. You can go to our website, thewayitis.tv. We actually have a revelation study guide that goes along with this series that you can download there. Um, Revelation timeline. Uh, you can write us Paul and Marla Reed. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television. <laughs>